Calgary, Alberta is a market that real estate investors look at for lower purchase price compared to BC and Ontario, as well as better potential for cash flow opportunities. Our guest today, Felix Chan, is a real estate investor himself, having invested across three provinces. Felix is also a realtor that runs the Live Inner City team, helping buyers and sellers navigate the Calgary market and will be providing his insights into the Calgary real estate market today. So Felix, thanks for joining us and let's dive right into it. Um, talk about why real estate investors are looking at the Calgary market. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, having me on the show, uh, uh, Taylor and Austin. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, Calgary is one of those uh, special cities where it's, you know, one of the, if you think about it, it's one of the last biggest and most affordable city, major cities in all of Canada. Um, and so, you know, we, we get a lot of calls, uh, because of our YouTube exposure from people in, in BC and, and Toronto, uh, and, and everywhere in between looking to invest here. And I think a big reason for that is really the price of acquisition. Um, and so, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, like a real uh, investment standpoint, uh, the landlord rules are, are more friendly here. Uh, I know BC is is pretty uh, pretty tight, um, and it favors more of the of the tenants, which is not a bad thing. Uh, but if you're looking to invest and become a landlord, you know B, uh, Alberta is, is is a much better landscape for that. Um, you can cash flow here, uh, and you know you can't really do that uh, in in other parts of of the can, big Canadian cities, um, and. You know, we get a lot of calls from from people wanting to uh, have appreciation, but the difference between cash flow and appreciation is that you know, with cash flow, it's guaranteed because you know how much your costs are and you know how much rent you're getting. Whereas appreciation in our market, anyway, in the Alberta market, um, it's not guaranteed. And even in big centers like Toronto, Vancouver, um, what goes up? usually comes down a bit. And just like any other industry, there are always corrections. Um, and so, uh, you know, when you're selling the property, uh, it just depends on, you know, what the market is doing. Uh, is it is it doing a little bit of a correction um, and, and things like that? So a lot of people like Alberta for the cash flow. Uh, obviously, with other things too, there's, you know, no land transfer tax, uh, no non-resident speculation tax. Um, you know, no foreign property tax in some areas. Um, and uh, you get to own dirt, not just air, uh, like condos in, in other markets, right? So, um, so yeah, I, th I think a lot of people are attracted to, to that, to, to those, those fundamentals. Yeah, definitely. I mean, being in the real estate world, talking to clients on a, on a daily basis, the two things you touch on affordability and cash flow are definitely um, two points that, that we hear a lot about and reasons why people are going to Alberta and, and Calgary in specific. Um, so, you know, we had an overview of the market. Talk maybe a little bit more about the specifics. What are you seeing in the condos, townhomes uh, and sin single family uh, assets right now? Yeah, it's interesting um, because, you know, when, uh, you know, coming out of the pandemic or near the tail end of the pandemic, uh, single family homes were just on fire uh, and they still were just up until recently. Um, and so the, is, the, the detached home market has, has cooled off a bit. I, I find that in the Calgary market, because, uh, you know, 25% of our GDP comes from oil and gas. And so, when oil and gas is doing well, you know, our market is doing well. And if you take a look at uh, even in the downturn, you know, and, and the oil crash in late 2014, detached properties always recovered well. And they were always the first property type to kind of take off. Um, and the condo market, they kind of lag behind. Um, and But right now in the Calgary market, uh, apartments are, are, uh, are, are doing very well. In fact, uh, it's been pretty stable since uh, the beginning of this year, and there hasn't been a lot of corrections with the, with that market, um, especially in the downtown market. You know, even though there's a ton of rental apartments being built here, um, I'm not really seeing a huge impact. I mean, it's hard to quantify the difference between, you know, the impact of the huge supply of rental apartments coming on the market from the last two years versus uh, and the impact on that on the resale market. And right now, um, you know, the, the condo market hasn't been this hot since 2014. So 
you know, if you're looking to buy, a, you know, a, a condo in the Calgary market, or if you're an investor looking for a condo, uh, um, know that, uh, it, you know, if you see something, uh, I, I would jump on it pretty quickly. Um, now, the luxury market, we are seeing, uh, you know, prices coming down. Of course, that's always usually the first property type to to come down uh, first. And, um, uh, you know, everything in between, you know, semi-detached is, is, is slowing down as well. But Rural housing, which are you know townhomes and condos, are are um, they're they're doing very well still. Awesome, thanks for thanks for sharing that. Um, interesting to hear that uh, the the condo market is is quite strong, and you haven't seen some of this strength since since twenty fourteen. So it's uh, it's interesting to hear from from Vancouver. And um, you talked about twenty five percent of the GDP in in Calgary coming from the oil and gas sector. You know, when you think of Calgary, you generally think of oil and gas, but what makes up that other 75%? What are some of the big industries or sectors in town that are kind of rounding out this uh, diversification within the, the economy there? Yeah, to be honest, I don't really know the specifics of that. Um, I mean, that is the biggest impact. So, um, and I followed the oil and gas industry uh, through the different cycles, you know, the 2014 oil crash, um, what real estate was doing before and afterwards. Um, but I think the thing that the city is really pushing for now, uh, you know, the Calgary economic development is, uh, is, is growing the tech sector. And uh, Jason Kenney, our uh, Alberta premier, uh, he actually just launched, uh, I think, a $2.7 million campaign uh, in, in markets like Vancouver and Toronto to attract tech talent to come to Alberta. Um, and so, you know, we, we are, we have been active in growing that. We've had some pretty major uh, companies, uh, tech companies, set up their head offices here in Calgary. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a snowballing effect. Um, if you take a look, you know, our, our office vacancy rate is uh, hovering around 28, 30%. And uh, our housing affordability is basically the best in Canada, other than Edmonton, actually. Uh, and we can talk a little bit about that later. Uh, based on a, a market from uh, Demographia. Um, and so when you, when you combine, you know, the amount of office space, uh, the, the, the push for uh, growing our tech sector, uh, our infrastructure, as well as the affordability in, in housing, it kind of makes sense that Calgary is a pretty good opportunity for more businesses, more tech to come in and set up, you know, uh, their, their offices. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. I think, um, you know, it's going to take a while, five, 10 years for the tech industry to get really established here in Calgary based on the trajectory that we're, we're on. But I think how that's going to affect the real estate is tech, they pay very well. Oil and gas, they also pay very well. So if you combine those two big paying, uh, you know, types of occupations, then what's going to happen to Calgary real estate? the luxury market is now going to boom. There's going to be more demand for seven, eight million dollar homes, right? Seven, eight hundred thousand to million dollar homes. The average price could get pushed up because now people will have the income to be able to afford those higher prices. So if you're looking to buy real estate and I'm looking to buy real estate, more real estate myself, before all of those things get gets established, you know, looking in the future, I think that's a possibility is that the average price is going to start going up because people are going to want more because they can make more. And so um, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how the impact is going to be, um, you know, in, in, in the future. Yeah, definitely. And also, oh, sorry, Austin. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No worries. And, you know, and in Alberta, we have, you know, we, we have one of the most sunniest, uh, we're, we're in one of the most sunniest places in, in all of Canada. Uh, and so solar is getting pretty big here. Um, you're starting to see that all over, you know, the, the roofs here uh, all around. Um, and when you break down the numbers, it kind of makes sense, given that there's, you know, uh, you can get an interest loan free, interest free loan from the government right now to $40,000. Um, so I, I think, I, I think the future is pretty bright for Alberta. Um, and I think some of that will probably spill over to Edmonton as well. 
Yeah. And as I was saying, you know, it doesn't necessarily, Calgary doesn't come top of mind when you think of tech hubs, but it does make sense that they're moving there with the, you know, available office space and affordability. Um, and when looking for um, places to invest your money, definitely where people are going, job growth is happening, uh, real estate prices obviously tend to uh, to trend in the right direction. So very interesting points there. You touched on it a bit earlier with the difference of investing in different provinces, um, BC not having any land transfer tax um, with Alberta not having that. Um, can maybe just touch a bit more in depth on what are some of those points that you advise um, out-of-town buyers when purchasing in Calgary or in Alberta? Um, <clears throat> sorry, I guess um, I didn't quite understand. Just, just the difference in, say, you're buying a property in BC, or you know, you said the ten the tenants acts in in Alberta are much more favorable. What are some of the ups, the cons, uh, the pros, cons in, in investing into Alberta? Yeah, as a as an investor, like you know, like we we had some property in BC as well too, and uh, you know, at the end of their lease, uh, you can only increase their rent by a, a certain percentage. Um, uh, I, I don't remember exactly what it is, and maybe you guys you guys could speak a little bit more to uh, about that. But in Alberta, um, there really are no rules. <laughs> you know, you could you could actually increase it, you know, two three hundred dollars. Uh, you know, for, for, for a bigger home and uh, it's up to the tenant if they want to move ahead with that. Um, so the controls in Alberta just seem to be a little bit more favorable. Um, there aren't as, as many restrictions. Um, and, uh, um, and also, yeah, the land transfer fee at the end of the day, you know, what are, what's important for investors is just the numbers. What is your cost of acquisition? What is your, 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 your borrowing costs? Um, and you know, are you able to cash flow? Are you to make money? Um, and are you going to be able to get that appreciation based on the area that, that you're looking to, to purchase in? Um, I, I find that a lot of, uh, people, especially investors, especially from, you know, BC and Ontario, they don't care so much about a lot of those things. They really focus more on, you know, appreciation and, um, uh, you know, it just doesn't quite work like that over here. Right. And we, we, we've seen people get caught with their pants down. Um, and so we just want to make sure that, uh, you know, investors kind of know the market, know the landscape, know the rules uh, so that they, they can, they know what to expect. And that, that can play into uh, into the returns that they're, that they're hoping for. And the, the one, I think, main point that uh, you touched on at the very beginning of, it, of your, your, uh, your webinar here today was you talked about the, the property transfer tax. And I think that that's a big sneaky little tax on the end of the purchase price here in BC that, that doesn't exist over there in Alberta. Um, so for some investors, that, uh, that does make a, a little bit of difference on, on the, the end result for, for their purchase. Um, you know, being involved in rain, uh, a lot of investors from over in here in BC have purchased uh, suited single family homes in, in Calgary um, seems to be a common, common trend with investors purchasing, you know, a two suited uh, property like that. What are your, what are your thoughts on that product class? How, how is it performing? Are you pointing your clients towards that? What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, actually um, uh, those types of products have been so popular, especially with out of town investors. Um, we've actually sold a ton of these, a ton of these, uh, these types of properties. And uh, I, th I think the reason why it's so powerful, it, th there's many different, it, it provides the most utility. And when I say utility, I'm talking about, it's great for investors because they buy one property, they have two suites, right? Yes, they're paying a little bit of a premium, but these are brand new. They have new home warranty. It's turnkey. It comes with literally everything. So you don't have to do much as an investor. And so a lot of investors like that because it's nice and easy and simple. Another utility for that is multi-generational families, right? As, as uh, more and more people get older, um, I'm finding that I'm helping out more families find a space big enough for two families. You know, you have your, your, your parents and then, you know, your, your grown uh, children with maybe kids and, but they want their own separation still, which, you know, that's, that's a big thing among a lot of families. So that allows for that to happen. And these basement suites are beautiful. Um, you know, they don't, they're nine feet ceilings. They have big windows. They don't feel like a basement whatsoever. Uh, another great thing is for first time home buyers. 
because of the rental income and because it has a legal suite, you can use the rental income to offset your debt service ratios with a lender. So before, if you couldn't afford, you know, 550,000, you can actually, or before you can only afford 550, you may be able to afford, you know, 650 with this rental income and still have a rental component to that. And buyers, first time home buyers, investors, they're so savvy these days because, you know, access to internet information and they realize how important it is to start building equity from the very beginning. Attaining assets like real estate, um, you know, it's, it's safe, it's easy, it doesn't have the same swings as, as you know, the stock market. Um, and uh, it allows for them to, to be able to buy a home and grow their real estate portfolio at, at the same time. And so, and, and when you sell it, um, you know, there's, there's so many different types of buyer profiles out there. All the ones that I mentioned, first time home buyers, you know, investors, multi-generational families, uh, it just makes a lot of sense. But the only thing is, you know, these are all in the, in the suburbs, uh, far from downtown. Uh, so, uh, a, a lot of investors say, well, you know, it's 20, 25 minutes away from downtown. Yes, it's true, but that's not your tenant profile. Your tenant profile is going to be the smaller, like maybe, maybe smaller towns outside of Calgary where, you know, people want to migrate to, you know, the edge of the city or the city, but still be closer to their family, um, and, uh, not necessarily, uh, be working downtown. So there's a lot of use cases for it. Um, it allows a lot more people to get into home ownership and still have that rental component. Uh, I think it's 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 great what they're doing, and uh, you know you're getting the highest and best use for that piece of land. So to me, it's a no brainer. Yeah, one point I really liked is uh, qualifying for a, for a bigger mortgage with uh, the additional income of the, the second suite. There, really, uh, you know, I think that's important for a lot of people to consider. Um, and with a lot of new supply, new condos coming. to market in the, in downtown. Is there one project that uh, that you're excited about um, or or really enjoy? Um, Not one in particular. Um, We've had some pretty good projects come up. Uh, One of my favorite buildings is uh, the Royal uh, downtown. Sorry, it's in the Beltline. Uh, It's, it's, you know, right close to 17th Avenue, which is, uh, you know, the main street where people, you know, nightlife, you know, there's lots of restaurants and a few, uh, you know, beer, beer halls and things like that. Um, And it's like right, right there where the action is. But one area that um, I I really like uh, is University District. Have you guys heard of University District in Calgary? No, I haven't. Okay, so... It's this huge piece of land that the university, uh, I, I believe they jointly own it with the city. Um, and what, they've, what they're doing is they're building this whole new community right by the Children's Hospital. Uh, and it's, it's, it's amazing there. Uh, they started building there about four years ago. It's about a 10 to 13 year project to build the entire area. And not a lot of people know about it still um, because it's, it's still kind of new. Now it is higher density, so lots of condos, uh, lots of townhomes there. Um, not so many single detached homes. They're actually building this first phase first, and then the single detached homes are going there later. So, but in the meantime, they've they've built all these amazing amenities. Uh, you know, there's there's pubs, there's ice cream shops, there's uh, you can go bowling there. There's a, a VIP Cineplex. So they're building this like new community right by the university. Foothills Hospital is really close by, so there's a lot of rentals there, uh, and the types of tenants you get are, are you know, a lot of them could be healthcare workers, um, and it's really close to well, Foothills uh, Hospital. They actually just recently finished uh, or finishing up uh, a 1.4 billion dollar uh, uh, cancer center, the Tom Baker Cancer Center, um, and there's just so much going on, uh, going around in that area. Um, so it, it's, it's a, it's a community that I would recommend people to look at, uh, investors because your tenant profile is going to be great. Uh, you know, they're going to be doctors, you know, you, you could potentially Airbnb it. Of course you have to check the, the short-term policy with your condo building, right? Uh, because just because they, and, and people have to be careful because I don't know what it's like in BC, 
but just because the condo building allows Airbnbs now, it doesn't mean that they're going to allow them later Mm -hmm. because people have parties, they ruin the whole thing. And, you know, like there's some bad apples that just can ruin it for everyone else. And so uh, it's a, it's a great area. It's a great vibe. It it is a little bit of a younger vibe over there, um, but it's an area that uh, people should not ignore, uh, especially if they're looking for that condo lifestyle or maybe a potential uh, condo investment. Very cool. Yeah. I went to uh, university of Calgary from 2010 to 2013. So um, I'll go kind of picture that whole area of what it used to look like back then and uh, excited to see what that that looks for. And um, yeah, great spot right between the university and, and the hospital there as well. Um, yeah. You said university district, that's what it was called. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Cool. And um, if there were other two, maybe little cities or areas or sub pockets of Calgary that an investor, you know, say, hey, Felix, where should I take a look <clears> at? What are maybe one or two other areas that that you would point them towards in addition to the university district area there? Yeah, great question. Uh, I'm going to share kind of two areas uh, and I'm going to kind of break them down. So the first one uh, is uh, also in the Northwest. Uh, I'm a little biased because I grew up in Northwest and I just love the area here. Uh, But it's, it's Banff Trail. Okay, Banff Trail. The reason why I say that, and it's really close to university district, it's actually uh, just only a few minutes away. Uh, It's an inner city community, uh, not overly huge, but the reason why I love Banff Trail is because it is the one community in the entire city that has access to three C train stations. Now, Taylor, as, as you know, if there's a C train station anywhere within the 800 meter radius uh, that, you know, you're going to get more rent for those properties than if it was like outside of that 800 meter radius. Right. So, um, uh, it has three C train stations It's really close. It's Crow child trail and 16th Avenue, which is highway. Number one is right there. Um, you're only, you know, 10 minutes away from downtown as a drive. And it's not so much the area, the, the community itself, but what's happening around there right now we're in, uh, construction, for a $35 million redevelopment plan. And they're beautifying the entire community. They're putting in more uh, uh, wider sidewalks. It's going to be more pedestrian and bike friendly. And across the street on Crow Child Trail, there is, uh, they're proposing to, uh, there's an, uh, it's called the Foothills Athletic Park. It's where uh, the Cannons uh, baseball team used to play. We don't have Cannons anymore. But McMahon Stadium, that's where the Stamps uh, play for football. And there is a, a proposal to revamp that entire area. Uh, this proposal's uh, in, in the tune of about $240 million, I believe. There's going to be a mix of uh, commercial, residential, and and retail. So that whole development is, is going to be great. And as you guys know, whenever there's private or public money pouring into an area, property values go up. Um, there's a lot of development happening on the main uh, street on 24th Avenue, six projects to be exact. It's going to bring in hundreds of more residents as well as some retail shops. And the University of Cal- Calgary is literally kitty corner to Bath Trail. And so far, uh, to my knowledge, they're spending almost a billion dollars in upgrading uh, their facilities and, and building new buildings. And so when, when I'm looking at as an investor, you know, uh, there's a few things I'm looking at. You know, what is the appreciation uh, potential uh, and also, you know, the cash flow and, and the location. And, there, and Banff Trail is going through um, some gentrification right now. A lot of infills are being built here, meaning old homes are being demolished and they're building, you know, one or, or two new houses on it. Um, and it's turning around uh, from, you know, more of a rental community because of its proximity to University of Calgary, SATE, uh, it's a post-secondary education school uh, and all the hospitals. And it's becoming more of a, a of an owner-occupied community. So if you give that, uh, you know, a few years the redevelopment plan, $35 million going into the area, the Ath- Foothills Athletic Park gets redeveloped and there's more shops and restaurants and, 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 a, and a state-of-the-art athletic park. Um, you know, you can't go wrong with something like that. Um, and so I, I'm a big fan of Banff Trail. Another area that I quite like is um, in the south, uh, the Oak Ridge, Cedar Bray, Woodlands area. 
Uh, it's in the Southwest. Uh, and, uh, you know, Taylor, you probably heard of the Taza development. Uh, it's a $4 billion development, uh, largest uh, one on, uh, on uh, 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 native land. And, uh, you know, they've, they've built a Costco there. Uh, and there's just three different developments that are happening there that uh, is going to bring up values uh, in that in those areas as well, too. And we're seeing a lot of people renovating existing properties there. So, so these houses are going up in value as as time goes on. And being from uh, born in Calgary, this next question is very close to home, but it's the Battle of Alberta. Um, why would someone be looking at Calgary versus Edmonton? And not to uh, to say anything bad about Edmonton, but why would someone uh, you know look at Calgary over Edmonton? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. I get that question quite a bit. Um, you know, the biggest difference I find, uh, I guess there's a few things. In Calgary, I think we have better climate, right? Uh, we're a little bit more south, so, you know, we're not as cold and things like that. Um, and another big difference is just the the uh, the types of jobs. Edmonton is more of a blue collar city, uh, whereas Calgary is more of, of, of a white collar city. And the reason why I say is we have a lot more head offices here. Uh, we have, I think, one of the, the most square footage uh, in a downtown in relation to the population that we have. Um, and so, uh, you know, it just depends on, you know, what you're kind of looking for. Um, we're, we're, we're also, you know, pretty diverse. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it just feels newer here. Uh, in Calgary versus, you know, Edmonton. Uh, haven't been to Edmonton, you know, too often. Um, but uh, that's just kind of like my take and my feelings on that. What about you, Austin? Yeah, I mean, I love Calgary. All my family is uh, is in Calgary. I uh, grew up, you know, skating on the outdoor rinks, going to Calgary Flames games. Um, so haven't spent much time in, in Edmonton. And, and with that rivalry, uh, I did play uh, a bit for the Calgary Flames there. So um, ties are, are close to home. So definitely a, a Calgary fan overall. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I second that. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll third it. The next ex UFC uh, student there. So I'll, I'll yeah. third it there. So we're, th we're three for three on, uh, on Calgary, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and you a lot of a lot of you tuning in today might uh, might recognize Felix from his uh, his YouTube channel. Uh, I know that YouTube's been you know a huge part of your business and your strategy for getting your your name out there, what you guys offer, and and really educating people on the Calgary market. So, kind of talk about how you stumbled into doing YouTube and and really the impact today now that it's had on on your business. You know what I realized, uh, you know, as a real estate agent. We are marketers. Sales is a result of our marketing. And so when I realized that, uh, you know, I dove deep into learning the fundamentals of marketing and the messaging and really how to get our message out there to help our sellers get the most exposure for, you know, the properties that they've listed with us. Um, and so, uh, once we realized that, uh, you know, we went, uh, pretty hard on YouTube, uh, we're, we're on YouTube the third year now, uh, and it's been, uh, tremendous for our business. Uh, if there's any entrepreneurs out there, uh, you know, looking to market their own business, uh, YouTube is, is a, is a great medium for that. Uh, keep in mind, YouTube is a search engine. Uh, so people are, are, if you target, to what they're looking for and you're solving problems for them, uh, they're going to find you. And so we, we try our best to educate everyone that watches our stuff uh, because we, that's what we try to do is we, we try to solve problems. And uh, it's really connected us with uh, some amazing people, uh, not just from Canada, but also the U S and Europe and, and all over the world actually. So it's been a, it's been a really great journey so far and uh, yeah, just uh, enjoying the ride. How many subscribers today? Uh, we hit just, we hit 7,000 just uh, last week. Very so, cool. uh, way to go. yeah, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, 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 it, I'm not gonna lie. It's like a part-time job. It is a lot of work. Uh, but, um, you know, looking at the longevity of our business, um, it just makes sense to, uh, to, to be on YouTube. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And you gave uh, Taylor and I a little a few pointers. So we appreciate that. And, you know, leading up to this, I hadn't had the privilege of meeting you yet, but went on your YouTube channel. And it's a very, it's a great way to familiarize yourself with someone before meeting them. Um, and it's just, it's a great medium. So I uh, appreciate mm-hmm. all the tips on, on that. And uh, yeah. you know, we work with a lot of, uh, of real estate investors. And I know you mentioned you had real estate uh, invested in real estate in the past. What are some of the, the strategies that you focused on? Uh, I, I'm more of a buy and hold kind of guy, um, you know, and, and of course the price of acquisition is always, you know, the most challenging thing. Um, so, uh, you know, buying and holding and uh, doing rentals and just improving uh, the value of the property, uh, legalizing uh, basement suites. Uh, are, you, are you guys familiar about uh, Calgary and the push to legalize secondary suites here? So is that the same thing that happened up in Edmonton? I believe so, but I okay. think Calgary did it first. And I'm not, too, I'll be honest, I'm not too familiar with like what Edmonton's doing. Um, I, I know that they're pushing for the same thing, but just, I don't know the, the exact details of that. Um, how, how does it all work? So uh, the city wants to make illegal suites, mostly basement suites, uh, safer. And so uh, what they were doing is they were encouraging everyone uh, to legalize their suites up to fire code, not building code, just fire code. So the the requirements were a lot less than if you were to do building code because you need you know separate heating source and all these extra things that will cost way more money. And so they've also uh, waived uh, some of the fees as well too. Uh, and it's been really, really well received with the city. And uh, to legalize my basement suite um, and, you know, helping out a few of our clients, you know, we, I'd say it would probably cost around 3000 to maybe $6,000. So not a whole lot, right? And it depends on your property. It depends if you have to uh, make bigger windows and, and, and cut through the concrete foundation to, to enlarge them. Um, it depends like, you know, the, the, the condition of the property before you buy it. But typically that's what we find. And appraisers are actually appraising properties with legal basement suites, forty to sixty thousand dollars more than properties that didn't. So think about it. Even if you put fifteen k into a property to legalize it, and you can get on the low end an extra forty thousand dollars, you're still ahead of the game, mm-hmm. and you won't have to. And you're going to be grandfathered in. So in you know uh, after twenty twenty, well in in twenty twenty four or later when the requirements will probably be building code, you're going to be grandfathered in because your legal suite is registered with the city and you won't have to worry about it. So it's really good for those who want to, um, you know, the first time investors I find that want to kind of fix things up themselves and they're willing to try a few things here and there, um, but not quite go deep into, you know, the whole renovation part of it. Uh, but to legalize and add some sweat equity, I mean, that's, that's a great way to do it. Um, we've helped a handful of our clients do that. Um, it's, to be honest, it's not that hard. Um, you can go on the city's website. So check out calgary.ca uh, and then type in uh, secondary suite. Uh, they'll give you the instructions and all the list of requirements on how to legalize a basement suite. If you had an existing one, if you have to put in a new one or even a carriage house, uh, which is... Um, it, in a, if you have a detached garage and you build a suite on top, that's considered a, a carriage house. Um, or in Calgary, uh, the city calls it also a, a laneway house as well. So, you know, those are, those are just different ways to, to increase the value of, of your property. Uh, and I, I don't remember your original question, but I'm, I'm just kind of like <laughs> going off, I'm just kind of going off of, you know, the, the um, uh, legalizing the basement suite kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, there's always opportunities to, to get the highest and best use out of your, out, out of your property. Yeah. It Only was, if you uh, own it, land. it was real estate tra- strategies and you nailed it long-term buy and hold and, okay. and you know, properties doing uh, <laughs> you know, suites, nice. You tackled it all. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you've heard of ways to add value, painting the exterior, you know, renovating the kitchen, you know, plugging in a washer and dryer, all these different ways to add value. But, uh, the, the strategy that you talked about there is very unique and, um, it's cool to hear that you're out there executing that with your, your clients today. Um, we're here on the final question of the afternoon, unfortunately. Um, I was going to ask you what's your favorite part about living in Calgary, but I'm going to flash back to one of my favorite parts about living in Calgary was the Peters drive through 
And the question <laughs> is, what's your go-to milkshake at Peter's drive through when you get one? <laughs> uh, the last one I had there was, uh, I think the banana strawberry milkshake. You know, banana just goes so well with like so many things. So you can't, uh, you can't really go wrong with that. That's my favorite. They're great. Yeah, even the, even the line makes it taste that much better at the end of it. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Austin? Have you been there yet? I've been there. Yeah. My favorite ice cream spot in Calgary is my favorite little ice cream spot there. I believe it's in Marta Loop. Uh, we yeah. used to go there when I was a kid and uh, I spent some time in Marta Loop when I was uh, living there a lot, a couple summers ago. So that's, yeah. that's my spot. And, and I'm kind of childish with my ice cream flavor. I like cotton candy. So uh, <laughs> there, there's that. yeah, nothing wrong with that. There's a, there's kind of a newer one that, that came into town. It's actually from, uh, the original shop was in Kelowna. So Taylor, maybe you've, you've, you've been there before, but it's called parlor oh, and, cool. uh, it's, it's in East village and it's amazing. You guys got to go check it out. It's in East village. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's right in the evolution building. And, uh, that's definitely my, my, my favorite ice cream spot right now. So, cool. um, but <laughs> next time we're uh we're all in calgary we'll have to uh catch up for a couple scoops yeah let me know let me know yeah, definitely. so uh but yeah i mean to uh to, you know you kind of asked about my my favorite part of, of calgary i just want to mention it really quickly quickly just comparing to and this is the feedback from you know different uh, uh people in in toronto and, and vancouver coming in is you know the the culture here is pretty good you know it's a big city now and it's pretty diverse um and Unlike those bigger cities, people aren't as transient, meaning they don't come to the city, stay for a little bit and then leave like Vancouver. Right. And it's hard to kind of be more stable with, you know, your, your circle of friends or your network. Um, but you you can be pretty stable here and, and have a good, solid group of uh, people, friends. Uh, and I think that's kind of like the biggest advantage of, say, something like Calgary. Uh, plus, it's a little bit more laid back than the city uh, th than the bigger cities. And the commute isn't as, as, as long to get, you know, groceries and, and even little things like that. So, um, so those are kind of like my biggest, my biggest favorite things of, of, you know, staying in Calgary. Great points. Thanks for uh, sharing those. Yeah. Community and, and friendships is, is very key and, uh, you know, grateful to consider you a friend and, and thank you for jumping on today to do this with, with Austin and I, and, uh, we look forward to seeing you in Calgary for a couple of scoops soon. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you, gents. Really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to the next one. Thanks, Felix. Awesome. Take care, Felix. Okay.